Welcome to the Walk Talks podcast, a resource produced by Southland Christian Ministries located in Ringgold, Louisiana. Our purpose is to provide you with daily devotions so that you can faithfully grow in your relationship with Christ each and every day. We hope these truths will be an encouragement to you as you hear from God's Word today. Welcome to another podcast of Walk Talks. This is Mike Herpster from Southland Christian Ministries, and I hope you're having a good day today, and I trust that uh, you're rejoicing in the Lord and all that He's doing. And I know you're probably looking forward to the weekend ahead, and hope that this uh, challenge from the Word of God can be something you meditate on today and something that, that can affect your life. We've been looking at men of God in the Bible that can give us some truths and some example for our year as we are still in the first month of our year. And uh, today we would like to look at the life of Caleb. Caleb, the faithful man of God who was one of the two spies who came back with a thumbs up. You know, the 12 men went to spy on Canaan, 10 were bad and 2 were good. How'd you like to be named for the rest of uh, the reading of Scripture as the losers in Israel, the 10 that were bad, and sung about in Sunday school? They were the loser leaders, but Caleb and Joshua... They were willing to go against the flow, stand up against the crowd, and faithfully face the opposition of the entire congregation of Israel and do the right thing. What we find in Numbers chapter 14 is the story where they're at the, the promised land and they're about to go in and the 12 men come back and two of them say, let's go, and then 10 of them say, no, there's no possible way. And the 10 loser leaders that are listed in chapter 13 they worked the congregation into a frenzy to the point where they're, they're really begging Moses to take them back to Egypt. I mean, to me, that's, a, that's an unbelievable statement. When the scripture says, they said, we want to go back to Egypt. Do you remember what was going, going on in Egypt? And when you don't trust God and when you get off of his pathway and you live in fear, you're going to make some very insane statements and insane decisions. And to, to want to go back to Egypt was an insane thing to, to want. It was illogical. They were, they were slaves. They were making bricks with, with straw. They were seeing loved ones die. They, it was a terrible situation in Egypt. But, but see, what, what happens when you don't trust God and when you don't move forward faithfully with what God has for your life, you end up doing illogical things. And we see a lot of that in our culture, don't we? So these 10 men worked the congregation into a fear frenzy, and we, we have seen a society filled with fear, have we not? You know, by the way, there's 365 times in the Bible, one for every day, where God tells us to not fear, to be not afraid, but to do what God calls us to do, which is to trust in Him. And uh, Caleb was willing to do that. In chapter 14, verse 24, it says about Caleb, But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, notice, it was the spirit of the man that made the difference. It's the character within that really makes the difference of the conduct without. It's very important that we live built upon the spirit within. And the spirit he had was that he followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land whereinto he went, and his seed shall possess it. Now there's three times in the Bible where Caleb is brought up and it says he followed me fully. One here in Numbers, one in Deuteronomy, and one in Joshua 14, which we'll see in just a second. Caleb was willing to speak and stand for the right thing. He was willing to go against the crowd. He was willing to do what was uncomfortable. Hey, if you're ever going to be faithful, you're ever going to be like a Caleb, you're going to have to be, be, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Now, that's a statement that, that's really challenged my life. Don't look for the easy way. Look for the, for the hard way. Do the hard things. Standing up for God, saying no to sin when your friends are getting ready to do it, speaking the truth to people in, in an environment that may be hostile, standing up in a culture, doing the right thing against, to stand against our wicked government, being pro-life and when, when it might not even be, in pop, be popular. I mean, and we could go on and on and on, standing in the schools, the school system against the false indoctrination, standing in your home against um, carnality when, when you see it with your, your siblings, um, helping people in the church to do the right thing and speak compassionately. Now, this, this was a humble speak, speaking, 
This was a humble stand. We're not talking about two men that were looking to be who's who. We're not talking about two uh, angry men. We're talking about men who humbled themselves in sackcloth and ashes and said, let's go take the land. What are we thinking? These men had been so convinced of the promises of God, they've, they had seen and remembered all the past performances of God, that they knew God was in charge and he was leading them into the land. See, when you start, start to forget what God has done and what God has said, then you begin to live in your own logic and reasoning skills. And whenever we live in our own logic and reasoning skills, we're, we're going to end up going the wrong way and being unfaithful. Trust the promises of God. Lean into the past performances and know that God can do it again. So it's interesting to me that Caleb and Joshua were willing to do the right thing, speak and, and go against the congregation, yet God um, still gave them what they wanted and they turned and went back in the wilderness and they wandered for another 40 years. And that what, that's what fast forwards us all the way up to Joshua chapter 14 where after Caleb and Joshua had wandered in the land and now we fast forward to them coming back after the 40 years and many of the people had died off in the land and the younger generation is still there and God had promised to Caleb and Joshua that they would still see the land because of their faithfulness. And uh, this is how we need to live life. We need to be consistent, consistent in our character of courage and in our, in our confidence in God and trusting in his promises. And in chapter 14 of Joshua, it says, 40 years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent from me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. I wonder today, can you say that you are wholly following the Lord your God? It's all of your being, all-consuming pursuit of God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land wherein thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old, eighty-five, and yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now, for to war, for war, both to go out and to come in. Now give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. That's a great phrase. Give me this mountain. What is the mountain that God wants to give to you? What is the, the deed that God wants to do through your life? What is the journey that you need to be on? It may, it may be a tough journey. It may take courage. No, it, no, let me say, it will take courage. It will take commitment. It will take faithfulness like Caleb. May God help us to evaluate our lives. Are we wholly following the Lord our God? Are we willingly trusting the promises of God and leaning on our confidence in Him, knowing that whatever He brings our way is for our good and for His glory? Are we trusting His Word and being obedient to it? Are we willing to stand with courage to do the right thing in the midst of conflict, in the midst of the congregation going all the wrong way? This is what we can learn from the life of Caleb, and it's a challenge to us in the culture in which we live. Don't give up the ground. Be like that salmon that swims upstream, that, that flops through the obstacles and up the, up the waterfall just to, just to give his, his life to spawn the next generation. Our lives are to be lived in such a way where we're swimming upstream in a downstream world just so that we can affect the next generation for the cause of Jesus Christ. May God help us to do the hard things, stand with courage, face the crowd, and do it with confidence in our God. Caleb teaches us that we can wholly follow the Lord our God. Hey, thanks for listening today to the Walk Talks podcast. I hope it's been a help, and I hope that you have a great weekend. God bless you. Thanks for listening to the Walk Talks podcast. We trust that what you've heard today has challenged your walk with God. It is our prayer that through this podcast, every listener would strive to become more like Christ and faithfully live for Him each and every day. Join us next time, and God bless.